This video is brought to you in part by SecondChanceGaming.com. They are a direct sponsor of me and this channel, so if you're looking to buy or sell cards, then definitely check out their site linked in the description. I'm a big fan of how they do business, so check them out and let them know that Phoenix sent you. But with that out of the way, let's get straight into the video. Hey, what's up guys? Phoenix here, and this video is going to be another Yu-Gi-Oh! deck profile video, and it's going to be yet another updated World Chalice deck profile video. The last World Chalice deck list that I'm going to be providing to you in the year of 2017. Now, the deck does evolve when we get closer to the game of 2018, with Extreme Force being released and Skull Eat the Chain Draco Serpent coming out. But until then, this is the list that I have that has been the most effective for me in my testing and at events uh, for basically just doing things like having explosive turn one boards as well as being fairly competent at grinding and playing when going second, which is a problem that a lot of my previous builds did actually have. Now, Aerojo Orlando was this previous weekend. I went to that event. I played World Chalice at that event. I did very well in the early rounds, then lost three in the last, th uh, in the last rounds, basically to my deck bricking once, and then I made some rookie errors because I just got really sloppy and wasn't paying attention, made the wrong reads, stuff like that. Things happen. I didn't get to test a lot for that event, but basically I did a lot of testing before that event, and I did testing at that event and after that event with friends, and basically all of the theories that I've come together uh, with them to like basically test have basically been culminated into this deck list, essentially, is what I've got to say for this. Uh, the deck is very good at doing uh, its turn one boards, and it's very good at grinding because of the cards that I've added to this list. There are small changes, but basically they were very highly impactful, but we'll get to that when we get to that. But anyway, deck list is 40 cards. Uh, starting out with three, Lee the World Chalice Fairy. This card is pretty much essential as a three of. I don't know why you'd be running less than three. Followed by three, World Legacy World Chalice. Again, this card is very important. This is arguably the most important card in your deck to resolve. So I don't know why you'd be playing less than three. Uh, two copies of World Chalice Guard Dragon. Now, this is a card that I've considered bumping to three multiple times. You want to have more World Chalice names in your deck to allow you to play through hand traps. It also allows you to grind a bit more efficiently. There's one card in the deck that I'm still kind of iffy on that I'm constantly swapping back and forth for the, the, either the third Guard Dragon or that copy of that card, and you'll I'll talk about that when I get to that. But basically, you can play three or two of this, but essentially, these work very well with the three copies of Chosen by the World Chalice that I'm playing. I went max on Chosen because it is by far the best vanilla in the deck right now uh, in terms of what we have access to. Beckons just isn't good. Baguska plays are not good. Natbeast plays are also not good. They're very bricky in nature because you run bricks to make the Natbeast play possible. And then to make Baguska, your hand literally has to be like the nut hand in order for that to be possible. Meanwhile, this is a good extender because you've got access to Emergency Teleport, as well as another card that I'm playing in the deck that you will see a bit later. But that is 11 World Chalice names, and I've been liking it a lot. That really helps you with your grind scenarios of, you know, you just you keep throwing Link Monsters out, and as your opponent outs those, you just keep summoning monsters from your hand, and then your Guard Dragon gets you stuff from Grave and stuff like that. Carrying on to the power cards of the deck. Three copies of Venus and three copies of Shine Ball. If you're playing a World Chalice deck and you're not running Venus, I'm sorry, but you're just honestly doing it wrong. When you're playing World Chalice, you're playing a numbers game. You want to look at your hand, see the, car the cards in your hand, like in terms of what monsters they are or what monsters they get you to, and you're running numbers. You're trying to get to an Ingirsu play to draw the most amount of cards possible, and you need numbers of cards to get to that, and you hard code that in your mind when you're playing that, when you're playing this sort of deck. And so that's why this card is so important. This card is worth four monsters on its own. At its worst, it'll probably be worth three because you may have opened a Shine Ball and used it for an earlier portion of a combo. And that's why World Legacy World Chalice is so good because it's worth three to four monsters on its own. Same thing with Lee. Lee is worth itself plus the monster that it searches. So it's worth two monsters. Guard Dragon, the same deal. It's worth itself as well as whatever monster it revives from the grave. So it's worth two monsters. You're playing a numbers game with this deck. You're looking at your hand seeing the monsters in it, seeing the cards that get you to monsters in it, and going, okay, how many monsters is this worth? How many can I put on the board? And so what does that yield me in terms of an Ingirsu play? Like, that's the easiest way that I can explain how you play this deck to people. And people that still say that you don't need to play Venus are honestly people that I consider to be in denial. Uh, but anyway, moving on. Three copies of Exodius, the Ultimate Forbidden Lord. I'd play four to five of this card if I was able to. That card is the nuts. Uh, one black wing go through the vague shadow. This does conflict with one other card in my deck, uh, but honestly, again, it goes back to that numbers game scenario. This is one card that doesn't take your normal summon, and it's worth three monsters. Now they're not the highest quality monsters because Imduk can't use tokens uh, to make it, but it usually does combo well with the vanillas in your hand to get you to the Imduk, and then you can do things like tribute this for World Legacy World Chalice, and then combo up from there. 
there's a lot of applications that it provides. It's definitely worthwhile. But the last, uh, the last sort of monster in my deck, in terms of the cards that like you expect to use on a regular basis, is one copy of Gym Knight Lazuli for the Brilliant Fusion target. Uh, Garnet is a card that I see a lot of people run instead of this card. I prefer this card because, again, it's it's a numbers game. You play Brilliant Fusion, send this from deck to grave when there's a vanilla there. It gives you the Seraph Knight, which is a monster, and then this gives you the vanilla back from your graveyard. That one Brilliant Fusion was worth two monsters. You get the Seraph Knight plus whatever this adds back. If it's chosen by the World Chalice, great. If it's Shine Ball, fantastic. It's, it's usable. Now, Garnet is by far leaps and bounds better of a card to have drawn than Lazuli because it is a normal monster so it does contribute to a lot of your game states but in the vast majority of the time you're going to be resolving Brilliant Fusion rather than drawing Garnet and I'd rather my card that I'm sending off Brilliant Fusion to have an effect that yields me pluses rather than just be a card that oh if I drew it that's amazing uh, <laughs> like honestly that sort of problem sort of goes away once we get Skull but as of right now I'll, I'll take the risk of drawing this card over a Garnet any day. Uh, but so for the rest of the monsters, it's Hand Traps and Kaijus. Now, this is a lot less Hand Traps than were in my previous builds. I usually play between 7 to 8, sometimes 9. And I realized that, like, Spirals, they go second. So I don't need to be playing all these Hand Traps or Spirals. Those can be in the side deck. The only Hand Traps that I really want to play are ones that are good against ABC, Pendulum Magicians, the other decks that are trying to go first. And so that's, you know, Maxi and Ash Blossoms, obviously. Uh, basically, I wanted to maximize the amount of other cards in my deck that were combo cards and, you know, just blowout cards in general um, if I am playing more cards for going second, which you'll see later. Uh, and honestly, it just it, it works out very well for me uh, in this ratio. I haven't had any problems. And then the last monster in the deck is one copy of Gamma Seal, the Sea Turtle Kaiju. Uh, it's the only Kaiju in the list. No real reason to play anything else. You side the other ones for when you're going second um, and all that sort of stuff. But anyway... That was 27 monsters, if I remember correctly. Uh, going on to spells, there is two Kyoto Waterfronts for the Kaiju stuff. If I was playing a third, I'd definitely play Terraforming over the three Kyotos. Uh, just for, you know, theory reasons of if you draw the Terraforming, you get to take a Kyoto out of your deck, meaning there's only one left. Whereas if you were playing three Waterfronts, uh, if you drew one, there's still two other copies of it in your deck, and that contributes to Bricks. Uh, but honestly, two is fine. This deck makes Trigate enough as it is. And then you can make Trigate. Usually you only need to negate one key card anyway. If you're smart with how you're playing, your, uh, with how you're using your negation, usually you can make it to where your opponent doesn't actually have any other cards to play anyway. Uh, you just have to be very perceptive. Um, the Gamma Seal is usually just a bonus. But it also does help those hands when you can't get to Trigate. But anyway, carrying on. Three copies of Brilliant Fusion, two copies of Unexpected Die, and one Emergency Teleport. Now I'm grouping all these cards together because they all essentially serve the same function. It's very interesting. Unexpected Die was a card that I dismissed very early on in testing with this deck, uh, but then as I started ramping up the vanillas in this deck in the forms of Chosen, I started realizing that I really wanted to test this card, and I tested it, and it turned out to be like the best starter card in my deck. This card essentially is another copy of Brilliant Fusion. Same with Etele. Etele just because Chosen is a target for it, so it's just strictly a better form of Unexpected Die. Brilliant Fusion gets you Seraph Knight, which gets you an additional Normal Summons, which is good for resolving World Legacy World Chalice. Unexpected Die does the exact same thing, except it gets you a Normal Monster out of your deck you use to make that into Imduk, and that's actually a lot more relevant than Seraph Knight in most cases. Now, Brilliant Fusion does have the added benefit of tutoring Lee or Venus to your graveyard to revive off Aurum, stuff like that. But Unexpected Die is just another consistency enabling card, and it also just works very amazingly in tandem with Brilliant Fusion because you don't use your normal summon anyway. So, like, it just makes a lot of your weird and wonky hands of, like, World Legacy World Chalice plus Lee plus a couple other World Chalice monsters. Like, this actually just helps out those hands, like, <laughs> significantly. Uh, it's easily, like, my favorite card in the deck in terms of cards that I want to see in my opening hand outside of Venus. Uh, like, the card actually is just great. It was great in testing. It was great at ARG Orlando when I played it. Uh, like, it got to the point where, like, my friends were, uh, when that, my friend that I was playing against in testing, it got to the point where he would start Ash Blossoming this because, like, the rest of my deck can play around Ash Blossom rather well if I resolve this card because it's just a free Emduk that you didn't use your normal summon for. Um, and so, like, it got to the point where he was like, well, the only card I can really actually Ash is this one. And so, like, it just got to the point where, like, if this card is soaking up an Ash Blossom, that's fantastic. Uh, like, it was, it was kind of wild. But all those cards serve the same function. 
Uh, and like Unexpected Die is 100% one of my favorite cards in the list. Uh, but carrying on, one copy of Soul Charge, one copy of Foolish Burial, and one copy of World Legacy's Heart. This card's actually really good in grind games, but this is the card that I'm still a bit wishy-washy on, and this could be the third Guard Dragon. This is the card that I'm still considering swapping out. Essentially, the two cards do kind of do the same role, uh, but World Legacy's Heart is just a straight-up plus one, just on activation. Anytime you resolve Lee or World Legacy World Chalice, or if you had a combo that involves just two like horrible World Chalice names in your hand, like two copies of Chosen or something, or an unexpected die play plus a Chosen makes this card live. So it's rather easy to get live in this deck with you know the unexpected dies and the Chosens and the E-Tellies and all the stuff. Uh, but essentially, I was noticing in my uh, testing that searching World Legacy World Chalice off World Legacy World Chalice usually wasn't ideal, because sometimes, depending on what your turn one was, it's not live anymore because you've gotten, you know, Unexpected Die got chosen out of your deck, e got chosen out of your deck, World Legacy World Child's got monsters out of your deck, Lee got another monster out of your deck, and, like, you drew cards off Ningirsu, and so usually you're very, like, sparse on World Legacy, uh, or, excuse me, World Child's names in your deck. Uh, so World Legacy's Heart being a searchable card that you can just slap down and just get a free plus one for uh, is actually just huge, um, especially, especially on the turn three game, uh, especially in grind games as well. Like, just getting the plus one is huge there. Especially since, like, a lot of the times you're doing, like, a stick Ningirsu play, and you're just, like, throwing cards at your opponent's cards with Ningirsu's effect. It's usually something that, uh, that's pretty worthwhile. But anyway, last two cards in the main deck are two copies of Evenly Matched. Uh, this card is a card that, um, that I'm, I was kind of iffy on as well, but instead of playing Hand Traps, I decided just playing a Blowout card in the main was better for the times that I do go second. This card is 100% a Blowout against Pendulum Magicians. Like, it just, it, it, it covers so much ground that it's not even funny. Uh, and so it just basically, uh, it was worth the spot in the main deck. I don't think I'd main three of it, though, because then it starts meshing with, like, ratios and stuff. Uh, the thing is, I've noticed about this deck that I don't really care if I go second all that much, um, or if I lose game one all that much, because, uh, like, this deck is so, like, easy to side very heavily for going first or second. Like, it's very easy to just side out all of your, uh, all of your going second cards and put in, like, cards that are decent enough when going first like um like just other uh, other random cards that are in your side and you can take out the cards like evenly matched and stuff just have a really consistent deck turn one of of the game that you're going first then if you're going second in a sided game after you've won a game you just side out a bunch of cards uh that aren't really optimal for going second and then you put in a bunch of blowout cards like evenly matched and kaijus and stuff and like the game twos and threes are the games where you just like get people with this deck and that was something that I started noticing in testing, was that, like, game ones, I wasn't really winning a lot of them if I went second. But, like, game two and three, the games were, like, so heavily in my favor uh, because of the way that, like, my siding pattern is. Uh, but, like, that's that's pretty standard as, as things go. But anyway, for the extra deck, three copies of Imduk. This card is pretty standard. Uh, two copies of Link Spider. I still like having two of this because, you know, you use one in a lot of the combos. And then having another one to go into, like, an extra link with is usually pretty ideal. But that's it for the Link 1s. For the Link 2s, Proxy Dragon, 2 Ebs, and Orm, the World Chalice Blade Master. Nothing too out of the ordinary there. For Link 3s, Trigate Wizard, 1 in Gear Suit, and 1 Guy Saber, the Lightning Shadow. Uh, I still play this card. This card actually comes up a lot, um, especially against Baguska, uh, specifically. Uh, is that uh, if your opponent makes a Baguska, usually your only way of beating over it is to have a world legacy world chalice that you can summon and then link into Orum, because then that makes this 23 and that can attack over it but if you don't have access to world legacy world chalice which you had to hard draw because lee would get no effect to search you have to make gaia saber because uh, gaia saber is the only monster in your extra deck that's easy enough to get into that attacks over it outside of trigate wizard but usually you don't want to make trigate wizard because it would be in your extra monster zone and gaia saber is a card that points down instead of up so it just it works out um, sometimes, like, I preferred it, I rather it would be, like, Decode Talker, and I might cut the second Eeb or the Link Spider for Decode Talker, um, just because that card came up a lot in testing, but it's not something that came up enough where I felt like it was warranted, but at the same time, Decode Talker is kind of good against the Pendulum Edition trap, so, I mean, maybe. If they're letting me play that far into my turn, then I guess that's on them anyway, but anyway. Carrying on, two copies of Firewall Dragon, uh, this should be pretty standard, you can't really play the deck without at least one copy of it, and then the Seraph Knight for your Brilliant Fusion, but anyway, that is this deck. Basically, Unexpected Die is amazing. Uh, anyone that tells you otherwise hasn't tested super extensively with the card, 
or doesn't understand exactly what the problematic hands with World Chalice are, because Unexpected Die 100% just deals with those, like, handily. Like, Unexpected Die just gets you into so many positive game states for yourself uh, that it's fantastic. Like, it, like, the fact that people started ashing this card was wild. Uh, this card was so insane, because the fact that, like, you play it, you get a vanilla, you link away with it into Mduck, or if you have Brilliant Fusion, you link into Link Spider, and then that makes your Brilliant Fusion automatically a plus one right then and there, and you didn't conduct your normal summon yet, so, like, that's fantastic. Like, these cards pair so well together to start your turn structure. Unexpected Die for a Chosen, link it into Link Spider, Brilliant Fusion, sending Lazuli and Lee or Venus, depending on what you required, and then adding that Chosen back to your hand, like, that's a fantastic interaction. Like, you just... Searched a card that allows you to like basically dodge hand traps with your World Legacy World Chalice plays, and like it just it works out very very much in your favor uh, when you start when you start looking at those sorts of interactions when you start playing the deck on a more simplified game state term of just trying to have more cards in your opponent the card is easily one of the best cards in the deck in terms of a starter uh, but anyway that is basically the deck list this is. All the theory that I've gone into uh, into an event with, I've done a bunch of uh, done a bunch of stuff with it. I wish there were more regionals uh, coming up before uh, before some things change. I mean, there is a regional in Atlanta before Extreme Force drops, so this will still be viable for that. In terms of, I don't have to really rethink the strategy of the deck enough uh, to incorporate Skulldeed and stuff like that. But even then, Unexpected Die is great for Skulldeed as well because, again, it's just a free monster that didn't take your normal summon up. Uh, but anyway. That's basically it for this video. Let me know what your thoughts are in the comments down below. As always, if you have any questions, comments, or concerns, all that sort of stuff, leave those in the comments down below as well. But other than that, as always, guys, thanks for watching. Links is always in the description down below to my Facebook fan page as well as my personal Patreon page. If you like the content I've been producing, want to help support my ability to continue making it, then Patreon is obviously the best way to do so. Even something as little as a dollar a month is a fantastic way to show your support for the things that I'm doing. And you'd have my eternal gratitude if that's something you'd like to do, if that's a route you'd like to go down to support something that you like if you'd like to support what I'm doing here. But other than that, as I've already said, thanks for watching. Like, comment, subscribe to all the nonsense you usually do. Th and thanks for your time, as always, guys. It's It means a lot. But other than that, take care. I'll see you in the next video. And now that the video's over, as always, I'd like to give a special thanks to Iradium, Jay Garcia, Yuki Phoenix, Troy Perkins, Eric Gertson, Tour Guides Guy, and Ringleader for all the support. <clears throat>